Okay, boom. I've literally just made a video, I think about 10 minutes ago that I've uploaded at some point, probably 30 minutes ago. And in that video is literally me talking about how Riley decided to go out there and see Scott. But at the same time, more importantly, it was about what Daniel had to say. Well, here's the thing. We're now in a situation where Daniel, no, sorry, where Scott has now decided to reply to Daniel. But before that, I just want people to notice how uncomfortable, at least in my opinion, Ry looks in this video. Because it seems to me as if he didn't want to be a part of Scott's life. If anything, it seems as if he went there to have a private conversation with him in hopes that that conversation could help Scott in some kind of way. But instead, Scott did what I would have expected him to do. And that is, hey guys, look at me. I've got a friend. Somebody likes me, so therefore I can't be that bad. So we, we should all like me. But listen, let's watch it, and then we'll get into the next part where he decides to say some shiz towards Danielle. So, I just, I, I just want to thank Riley again for this delicious lunch. Um, Come on, man. It's my <laughs> card would have got declined anyway. So, great company. Thank yeah. you for a great job. Yeah. And yeah. This, this, is my, this is my rock. This is my new BFF. Riley I love rock. you, man. Riley the rock? Rocking Riley, yeah. Wait, wait. Can you, hold, can you hold the phone just like that? I love you. I love you, man. Ooh, I feel your nipple. Hey, I hope everyone's doing okay. All right, before we continue, for me personally, at the very beginning, because let's, let, let's remember something. When it comes to Riley, Riley's a very confident character. Very confident character, very relaxed. You know, if he wants to be on camera, he wants to be in a situation, you're, you're going to see that oozing out of him. The fact that I see Riley for the first time since probably, I guess, when he was with Violet and, of course, she would make an info on Compo at certain times, this is the first time in a long time that I've seen that. Since his season is over, each time we've seen him online, whether it's been him on Pillar Talk with Kimberly or on a license with Kimberly or whatever, he's always had somewhat of a presence. He said himself of being relaxed and being confident. In this one, he didn't look so much for. You know what I mean? It looked as if maybe he was unexpected Scott to, uh, well, pull out the camera and, uh, you know, put it on live. But here's the thing, though. This is evidence to say that sometimes in life, your heart may be in the right place. Your intentions may be in the right place. But it doesn't mean that you should um, waste your heart or your intentions on the wrong people. Scott is definitely one of those people that is the wrong people. But here's the thing. In life, we live and we learn. Sometimes we have to try and help people and hope for the best. And in that situation, we can then only walk away and think to ourselves, okay, so did I actually help that person? Or was that person being absolutely difficult? Because I'm now starting to realize, realize that this person is actually a freaking douche. Well, you know the rest of that one, if you know what I'm saying. Hmm. But listen, now let's get into what Scott had to say towards Danielle. And uh, hmm, yeah, it gets spicy. But also at the same time, let's not forget that we are on the road to 50k subscribers. We've got 13 days to get there, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, let's make it happen, okay? Come on, I know you can do this. Subscribe, help me get there, like the video, and uh, let's go. Okay, so, you know, this Danielle, she never stops. I told her, I warned her. I even had the police tell her not she gave out my phone number a while back ago on a live one of her thugs gave out my number on a live she tries to gaslight everybody she tries to create relevance but you know what she doesn't take ownership on nothing and she's a complete contradiction for example this whole thing with johan i mean first of all i don't know why she's obsessed with these she keeps DMing and saying all these slanderous things about me she's never met me she's never talked to my exes like she's so full of shit complete contradiction let me give you an example. Guess what? You know, I did a bankruptcy, I own it. She did a bankruptcy, she doesn't acknowledge it, she sugarcoats everything. And then just like her relationship, you know, I've had a failed relationship and I've made my mistakes. She she, she blames everything on Johan. You know what, everything she had done to her, she fucking deserves it. She deserves it, you know what? And I don't know what her obsession is with me. I have no idea, but just stop talking about me. Leave me alone. You you know what, before we even finish, I've got to intervene this bit here. So we've heard him say several times, contradiction. <laughs> Saying as if he's not somebody that contradicts himself. But here's the thing though, the reason why I stopped is because you see, he says that everything that's happened to Daniel, she deserves it. Now listen, whether or, not, whether or not people agree with that or not, this is another proof to say that Scott is not a nice person. Someone that is a nice person, someone who's got a pure heart, would never wish anything on anybody. 
anyway it doesn't matter who they are they could be the, it could be the person that bullied him the most it doesn't matter they would they could they would only ever wish the best for that person only wish that person could become a better person could become a stronger person could become a more of a pure person you know for somebody who's got hate in their soul hate in their heart somebody that just isn't a nice person is the kind of person that will sit there and say you know what you deserve what happened to you now listen it doesn't matter whether it's true or not it's just the fact is this the principle is very simple if somebody is good they would never say that she's out loud. I mean, maybe they wouldn't even think it in the first place. I don't know, but I can say this now. Me, myself in particular, I wouldn't sit there and say to her, well, you deserve everything that happened to you. No. What benefit do I have from saying that? You know, I'm the kind of person where I'll be like, listen, you've done a lot of things that wasn't cool in your relationship. And this is where it ended. The question is, can you now learn from these things and do better? That's the kind of thing that I would say to someone like a Danielle. Not, oh, you deserve everything that. But me saying that, well, how does that help her? That makes her continue doing that, if anything, right? So the fact that Scott is saying it is more proof that there's a reason why people don't like you. Because you don't say nice things. You say things that are cruel. You say things with intentions of being mean. You don't say anything with intentions of being nice. You don't say anything with intentions of being helpful. Everything that you say is just oh, diarrhea, shall I say. <laughs> But the fact is this though, whatever Scott wants to say about Danielle, <laughs> just look in the mirror and it's really not that different. So anything, if there are any insults that you're saying, they're the same insults that you can take back to yourself. Point blank, period. But let's continue. You don't know me, you don't know my exes, you don't know nothing, okay? Go waddle away and kick your coconuts and hang out with your thugs down in Miami. I don't care, okay? But own your mistakes, okay? And stop being... You don't care, but now you're telling her to own her mistakes. It's interesting though, isn't it? Because he speaks about how because he was able to own up to the whole Brat Robson thing and Daniel isn't able to do it, that makes him any better than her. Does Scott not realize that like, when it comes to people who have not the best intentions, it doesn't matter if you own up to certain things and the other person doesn't. What matters is the fact that you both are in a position where your intentions don't ever come across as pure. Your intentions always come across as if you're purposely trying to be spiteful, as if you're never, as if you was never actually open to having something that was good. Look at it this way. With Scott, when he went on 90 Day Fiance and he did the whole thing with Lydia, it was evidence that he just wanted to add another Latina to his freaking ranks. It's as simple as one, two, three. And I guess with Danielle, when it came to her with uh, Johan, I guess she wanted to add another, you know, uh, um, Caribbean guy to her list. You know what I mean? And if anything, we know that for sure, for sure, she just wanted something that she can control. So again, I wouldn't sit and defend her relationship in any kind of way. But the fact is, though, Scott has to realize that uh, both of your intentions to the people that you've been with, both you two, has been as bad as each other. So you can't sit and talk about, well, I did this, I owned up to that, she didn't own up to this. It makes no bloody difference. Look in the mirror. Take accountability. And to be fair, fair enough, Daniel came after you. But if you're really a good person, then what you would do is actually, you know what? Either ignore what she says and then look yourself in the mirror and be like, you know what? I need to hold myself accountable. Or list or read what she said and be like, you know what? Maybe I did come across this way. Maybe I did make these women feel this way. And if this is what I did, I have to do better. Rather than make a video talking about how she deserved this, she deserved that. Where do you benefit, Scotty boy? Huh? Where do you benefit? <laughs> oh, yes, right. You don't, right? The only thing that you benefit from is the thing that you like the most, and that is called attention. But we continue. The contradiction. You talk about herbal and organic and doing all these healthy things. Meanwhile, you're smoking a pack of marble lights or marbles a day. Me being a respiratory therapist, you should know better, right? Your carbon monoxide is like 9% walking around. So don't go there, all right? Unbelievable. Own up to everything and quit playing victim and quit being a crybaby. Piss off. <laughs> you gotta love the language, right? You gotta love the language. Pee off. What a great person you are. But here's the thing though Scott speaks about how he had uh, called the police and Daniel in the past. Well, look no further. He has done it again. I don't know, I don't know what I just did. There we go. Boom. As you can see right here. Oh, you can't even see it because the words are actually kind of blurred out. But right at the bottom. Can I zoom in on this? I don't think I can zoom in on this little bad boy. But at the bottom here, okay, ladies and gentlemen, what it actually does say, I do apologize for this, okay? Actually, in fact, let me get it up bigger for you guys. 
All right, boom. In that post, he decides to come by saying, you've been, you've been warned. I think he's basically, yeah, you've been, anyway, you've been born by police. Stop talking about me. You don't know me. Never met me. Pee off. Nut job. Well, this is Scott showing that he's an amazing person and he is, uh, you know, yeah, that pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny how somebody can sit here every day trying to prove a point that he's this great person but then once he gets bit what happens he reacts he reacts like a freaking child sorry let me not uh dis let me not disrespect children like that he reacts like scott yeah i don't want to disrespect anything in this world yeah he reacts like scott it's the best way i can say it but hey let me know exactly what you're thinking down below and uh we can talk about it don't forget to like, subscribe, and 50k. Come on now. Peace.